Take your Bibles out and turn to St. Luke chapter 23. Um, you, you're going to get in one, in one Sunday what took two or three Sundays at Phillips. Amen. They were, when, they were, when they were trying to figure out how long we were going to be, how long service was going to be, they, they, you know, they were, that was a nice way of saying that I can be long sometimes. Amen. <laughs> Um, but we want to spend some time dealing with something that is the singular message of the church. You can give me a little bit more volume on this mic. The singular message of the church. We only have one message. Amen. We really only have one sermon. You take this message from Christianity and we're like all other. We cease to be a relationship and begin to be a religion. Did you hear what I said? You take this message from Christian preaching and we cease to be a relationship and become a religion. Christianity is not a religion. Christianity is a relationship. We have this relationship because of this one central truth. You take it away, we might as well sleep in on Sunday mornings. This basic message. We see it on our, we see it at Calvary and on Ash Wednesday, you and me and probably billions of people all across the world begin to look with special attention beginning on Ash Wednesday to the crucifixion and resurrection of our Lord. Because something happened on that last weekend of the life of Jesus that gives us the message that we have as Christians. So I want to take you to Luke 23. And if you don't mind, drop down to verse 32. I want to read into your hearing this passage and uh, bring out some points about the particular message that we have as Christians. Are you there? Luke 23, 32. Two others who were criminals were led away to be put to death with him. When they came to the place that's called the skull, there they crucified him and the criminals, one on his right and the other on his left. Jesus said, look at this, Father, Underline this, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they cast lots to divide his garments, and the people stood by watching, but the rulers scoffed at him, saying, look, he saved others, let him save himself. If he is the Christ of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, if you're the king of, king, if you're the king of the Jews, save yourself. These, there was also an inscription over him, this is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged railed at him saying, are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him saying, do you not fear God? since you're under the same sentence of condemnation, and we indeed justly, for we are receiving the due reward of your deeds, but this man has done nothing wrong. And he said, look at this, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus said truly, I say to you, today, somebody say today, Amen. you shall be with me in paradise. I want to put a tag on this text just for a few moments this morning. You can be forgiven. You can be forgiven. That's, that's the only sermon we have. The only message that we have is that guess what? God can forgive you. 
I, I had a military father, and he was a tough man. I thank God for him. Now, I didn't appreciate him much as a kid, but <laughs> I wish he'd been a little bit harder on me. He was, a, he was a stickler about forgiveness. It was one of the verses. Uh, we grew up in a Methodist home and uh, uh, a Christian home that was, you know, you, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Amen. One of the things we would, do, we would do at the dinner table, we would sing the Methodist grace sometimes. Another thing we would do is we'd each have a Bible verse and we would go around and you couldn't say Jesus wept. That was too short. You had to come up with something. <laughs> else. But he would also, also, also often have us quote as children uh, Ephesians 4.30, forgive one another just as God in Christ has forgiven you. One good thing my father did is he let us know that we ought, to, we ought to forgive others as the way God has forgiven us. He was good at laying before his children the need, not only the need, but the possibilities of being forgiven. I said to you that it's the only message we have, and it's true. You can be forgiven. Every church, Phillips Temple, every Sunday, Phillips Temple, every Sunday, Hope Church, and every other church in the world is full of people that, guess what, can use the message of forgiveness. You might as well say amen. I'm telling you the amen. truth. We need forgiveness. And what you're getting is, is part two. I might bring a little bit of the first sermon in, amen, but you, you can be forgiven, and we need it. Let me tell you why this story is so special. Follow me now. This, this, this is in the Bible, and, and it's significant because it tells us that, that you can be forgiven despite how miserable your condition might be. I said something right there. Some people believe that they've gone, done too much, said too much, too far gone, that they're somehow beyond forgiveness, that their, their situation has been too long, they're in too much misery, they're too desperate. But this story is wonderful because it tells us that forgiveness is for those whose situation is hopeless. Say hopeless, hopeless, hopeless. If there's anybody here who has no hope, you're in a good place for forgiveness. You're in a good place. Darkness in your life, I thank God for it. Number one, you can't escape, escape human life without dark moments. The dark times, the hard times, the difficult times, they help you to appreciate it when times are good. I wish somebody would say amen again. This story is wonderful because it tells us that our situation is never too hopeless. Your marriage hadn't gone too far. Your husband hasn't done too much. Your wife hasn't done too much. Your children haven't gone too far away. You can be forgiven. It's right here in this passage. These two men, one who was on the right, one was on the left, they tell us, several things. Number one, watch this, watch this. They tell us that you can be miserable and still be close to Jesus. Oh yeah. You can go to church every Sunday and still be miserable. <laughs> you can sing every song, pray, read your Bible. You can be in close proximity, amen, and still not be a Christian. And there's nothing more miserable than to be in a situation when you need forgiveness. I don't know about you. I've hurt people. I've let people down. Amen. I, 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 I could be on this cross. Come on, somebody. When it talks about here, these two men, criminals, amen, I see Jimmy's name right up there. Amen. And there's nothing worse to be in a position, amen, so miserable that you need forgiveness. But I'm here to tell you, you can be, you can be forgiven. Amen. These men, watch this, were alone at the cross. 
There's no more lonely place than in the place of needing forgiveness. Amen. These men were alone. He, he, even, even Jesus had his mama. But these men had nobody at the cross. Nobody stood for them. They were alone completely. I'm here to tell you, forgiveness is for those whose situations are miserable. They, they were both close to Jesus, right next to him. They were alone. Watch this. Look, look. They were going to be put to death. They were being executed. How worse can you get? I wish I had the time to, to tell you about how miserable human crucifixion is. Probably, I can't think of a more a horrible way to put somebody to death. It was designed to be miserable from the point they put you up there, even before then, to, to when you, for you to die. Their situation was miserable. They were, as I said in the first service, they were being punished for their sins. I would ask you to raise your hand, but I'm not, because I was going to ask you, how many people here have been punished for your sins? We all have. Doesn't sin have a way of finding you out? Oh, the misery we have known before we were forgiven. Oh, how heavy sin can be, how it can scar us. We, we learn from this story that forgiveness is for those whose situation, I don't know if I said it like this, is helpless. Anybody helpless? I want you to remember that, that Christ died for you. He didn't come for the strong, he came for the weak. Didn't come for the righteous, he came for the sinner. There's, there's a song, there's a song, it's an old hymn, but it's getting new. But the, the first, I was hooked after the very first phrase. The very first phrase, hook me, Jesus, friend of sinners. I was in right there. <laughs> Is there anybody here glad that he's a friend of sinners? This story teaches, number one, that forgiveness is those whose situation is miserable. Forgiveness is for those who are helpless. But can I show you something else? We're learning from these two men in close proximity to Christ. Notice this. Watch this. This, this, this story is powerful because it teaches that we are powerless on our own to receive the forgiveness of God. Can I say that again? This story proves that nobody has the power themselves to receive God's forgiveness. We just can't. Salvation is all him. Even the ability to receive his grace is all him. It's not in you. It's not in you. It's not in you. It's not in you. Not in you. You're too miserable. <laughs> Our situation is too hopeless, too helpless. We, th this, story, this story shows that no human being has the power to come to God on his own. How miserable we are. How hopeless we are. How powerless to save and change our condition. We can't. We can't do it without Christ. Did you hear what I said? You cannot change your situation. You cannot change your, 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 you, you can, you, listen, you cannot do it apart from the help of Christ. Here's, here's, here's Jesus on the cross, two men in close proximity, and one of them insults Christ. They're right next to God himself in the flesh. One of them insults him. 
It's right here in the text. If, if, if you were here at the last service, we made the point that, con con that forgiveness is continual. You remember that because in verse 34, Jesus said, Father, forgive them. And that verb in the Greek meant forgive. He kept, the whole time he's on the cross, he kept saying, Father, forgive them. Father, forgive them. Father, forgive them. Over for three hours, Father, forgive them. Father, forgive them. And, you know, we don't want to forgive somebody twice. Jesus teaches that forgiveness is continual. Do you remember that time he asked Peter well, how, how many times, Peter asked him well, how many times should, 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 should we forgive our brother who sins against us? And Peter thought he was being real, 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 real liberal seven times a day. Jesus said, oh no, 70 times seven. That doesn't mean 490. He's simply saying you keep on forgiving. Even though people keep hurting you, the same person keep hurting you, you keep on forgiving. Isn't that what we do to God? You do know we sin against God, right? You do know that our sins are confront God, right? What does he do? He keeps on forgiving. I was reading this morning in Psalms 40 where David was sure that God's mercies would never be kept from him. We have the nerve to have somebody on a list, well, they did it seven times, I'm done with them. No, 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 that's not biblical forgiveness. You keep on forgiving the same people, though they may hurt you over and over again. Why? That's the way God forgives us. But here on the cross, both of these men heard Jesus cry out over and over again for three hours. Father, forgive them. Over and over again. But notice verse 39. If you have your Bibles, notice verse 39. Look, at this. one of the criminals who were hanged railed at him saying, are you not the Christ? Save yourself, what? And us. He does not receive the wonderful, free forgiveness of God. He's still selfish, still thinking about himself, still trying to get out of it. Amen. Doesn't that sound like me and you? Come on. He's an example that guess what? We are powerless to, to receive the mercy and the grace of God on our own. Even, even the faith to believe is not our own. It's the gift of God so that nobody can boast. You know why we're saved? It took a miracle. <laughs> It took God moving on our mind, God moving on our heart. We are saved. We, are, we, we, we want a miracle. The, the fact that you love Christ is a miracle. The fact that you, you pray with the power of the Holy Spirit is a miracle. Because that power to believe, the power to pray, the power to walk with him does not come with us. All we would do is insult him. That's, that would be me without his grace. I'd be the man in verse 39 without his mercy. We are powerless. My brothers and sisters, our condition is so miserable that God has mercy on us and extends his mercy to save. We can't even receive forgiveness without God's grace. You ought to rejoice in your salvation. It took nothing less than a miracle. If it weren't for his grace overcoming us, here's some Methodism, his prevenient grace, that grace that comes before, that grace that woos us, that grace that courts us. Amen. Anybody, anybody married to somebody, in love with somebody that wasn't studying you at first, amen, they didn't care anything about you, didn't know who you were, but you just kept being so sweet, you just kept being so kind, so loving, that eventually you wooed them. That's how we got saved, amen. God's grace overcame our evil. God's grace overcame our sin. God's grace overcame our pain. God's grace overcame our humanity and rescued us. How do I know? Look at verse 40. But the other rebuked him, saying, don't you fear God? Since you and I are under the same sentence of condemnation, 
and we indeed justly, for we are received, look at this, the due reward of our deeds. But this man has nothing, done nothing wrong. I don't know if you saw it. There's a great difference between these two men. Great difference between two men, both in the same location, both in the same situation, both in the same condition, both heard the same words, but only one was touched in the heart. The other was touched in the head. <laughs> Didn't go any further. It, re it really does begin in the head, move to the heart. We hear the message of Jesus and mm, the Holy Spirit does something to our mind, but doesn't stop there. He moves to our heart. These two people are here today. Amen. You're either in verse 39 or you're in verse 40. And if you're in verse 39, you still have a list of people. You still got a list of, of people that have hurt you. And you haven't forgiven them. You know why? Because you have not received forgiveness yourself. If you're in verse 40, thank God. You know how God has forgiven you, how God has been gracious to you, and you're quick to forgive. Can I say something? Your marriage can make it if you get in verse 40. You stay in 39, You'll see a lawyer. You're going to need a lawyer. Your relationships at work can be changed if you stay in verse 40. You're going to be out of a job if you stay in verse 39. Think about what God has forgiven you of. You know what that means? You can forgive your child, your son, your daughter, your granddaughter, your grandson. You're either in verse 39 or verse 40. These two men are here today, right here at Hope Church. Both will hear the same message, both touched in the mind, Agree that everything Pastor saying, Jimmy is Jimmy saying is true and even sounds good. But somebody's heart's gonna be touched. God's power is going to move. Grace will be provided. Let me tell you something, grace is the only remedy. Amen. I got some I got some glaucoma and I got I got I got I got an eye drop to take at night and an eye drop to take in the morning. It's the only remedy outside of surgery. I don't go to surgery, I better take this medicine, amen. And, and I'm down to my last drop at night. Amen. When I leave here, I'm going to CVS. Come on, somebody. <laughs> and I'm getting I'm getting my eye drop refilled. Let me tell you something. Grace is the only remedy for your situation. And there are always refills. Amen. God's grace is more powerful than your condition. I'm praying for grace to win. Grace, is, grace can, can penetrate your stubborn heart. God's grace can reach you no matter how deep, how wide, how long the misery of your situation is. God's grace. Well, why don't you say, Lord, do, do for me what you did for the man in verse 40. Do for my life, verse 40, and believe that God is able. Yes, I said misery again. You'll be miserable without his grace. Miserable without his 
acceptance, miserable without his love, without his care, without his compassion, without his power. Side up with grace. You're going to be miserable in verse 39. But your life can change in verse 40. Don't, don't stay in misery. Cry out to God. Can, can I get a little theological now? That was all very practical. <laughs> but I want to stay true to this passage. Thirdly, forgiveness is for those who understand just how bad they really are. See, God is not interested in making good people better. You can go get a, uh, go to Barnes and Nobles. For, Barnes and Nobles, are they still open? <laughs> Amazon, amen. Go to, go, to, go to Amazon. I bet right now, how can I be better? Probably 15 books will come up. God's not, in, God's not interested in making you better. You know what God does? You know what Calvary does? You know what the cross does? It makes dead people alive. You, you can't get a book on that. <laughs> you cannot be forgiven. Yeah, you can't get this only book. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the point I'm making is this. Watch this. Forgiveness is for those who understand. Here's the theology in this. Here's the theology. Watch this, that the wages of sin is death. And death is the just reward. You, can, you cannot be saved without that. You know, you know how you know you've been forgiven? You understand that you don't deserve it. You understand that death is what you deserve and it's right. The things I have done deserve the death penalty. And there's not a court in Ohio that could overturn it. You see, I understand the nature of sin. I understand what sin is. And if you think that you really are, you know, pretty good old Joe, pretty good old Jane, guess what? You don't know what it means to be forgiven because you don't know the, the, what sin demands. See, God, God's law is simple. Love me with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength. Deuteronomy 6, 4, right? Problem is, anything you don't, anything, anything outside of that is sin. Well, ain't nobody here love God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. And God says the wages of sin is what? Death. The soul that sinneth shall what? Surely die. You, you won't be saved unless you understand that you deserve death. And it's right. Amen. It's, it's right here in verse 41. And look at verse 41. And we indeed justly, for we are receiving the due reward. He said, listen, we're getting what we deserve, but not this man. He hadn't been to seminary. He had a lifetime of being a thief and a murderer, but something happened on the cross and he understood that, wait a minute, he was getting what he deserved. We're getting our deserts. Theologically, we say that one of the one of the fruit of forgiveness is divine conviction. We're convicted of our sin. We're convinced of our sin. Broken. What time is it? Well, I'm going a little long. Let me finish, okay? <laughs> Fourth. Forgiveness demands that you believe the claims of Christ. See, once you get forgiven, you, you believe the written claims about Jesus. 
And you don't need to go to seminary for that. This, this, this dying thief was transformed by the mercy and the grace of God. And part of that transformation was the understanding that he was getting what he deserved and Jesus was not getting what he deserved. How do I know? Look at verse 41 again. But this man has done nothing wrong. That's exactly what the Bible says about Jesus. He was perfect, sinless, holy, undefiled, Hebrews, separated from sinners. If you believe the claims of the gospel. Finally, forgiveness changes your destiny. Okay, wait a minute. That was not completely true. Here it is. Watch this. Forgiveness changes your eternal destiny. That's what I want to say. That's what I want to say. This story teaches, teaches that, that forgiveness changes where we're going to end up forever. Amen. You, you, you and I were not made for this forever. This is the land of Summo. Keep living. You're going to have some more heartbreak. Some more disappointment. Some more pain. Some more misery. Some more strife. We were made for the land of Nomo. No more pain, no more misery, no more strife. Forgiveness changes your eternal destiny. Can I show you? This, 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 this dying thief says, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Look, look, at his, look how Jesus responds in verse 43. Look. He said to him, truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Jesus said to him, I have something better. It's going to be a time, it's going to be a while before I set up my kingdom. You're going to be waiting a few centuries before then. But I tell you what, I'm going to be with my father. Hey, I'm going to be in paradise. I'm getting ready to leave this world. And where I am, there you're going to be. Let me ask you something. Do you have the certainty of heaven? Hmm? Do you have the certainty that your eternal destiny is with the Lord? That's, let me tell you something. That's one of the marks of true salvation. <laughs> we know, we know that the work began in us will be completed. We know it. We know that, 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 that nothing can separate us from, from, from his love. And then, then seven things are mentioned. Life, death, powers, principalities, things present, things to come. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. is in Christ Jesus. He told that man, today you will be with me in paradise. If I had time, I would talk about the theology of that, that today. Powerful. <laughs> Forgiveness changes your eternal destiny. Oh. Aren't you glad that God is willing to save? You don't get more desperate than these two men. Amen. <laughs> you don't get in a situation more miserable than these. One 
was forgiven. What about you? Your life has not gone too far. You haven't done too much. Amen. God saves even in the most miserable conditions. You're not too far away. He, he knows you where you are. There's a story of a little boy who uh, lived in New York City, but he got lost. And he didn't know his phone number, didn't know his address. Lost in New York. That's a tough place to be lost in if you don't know where you, where you live. He was walking aimlessly around, crying. Finally, a police officer saw him and said, son, what's, what's the problem? He said, I'm lost. I don't know my phone number, I don't know my address. He said, well, get in the squad car and maybe we'll drive around and, and see you find something that you'll know your home. And that's, it kind of makes sense because New York City, even though it's you know only a few, it's not really that many miles, but if you know you, New York, it may not be in miles, but a whole lot of streets, amen, a whole lot of neighborhoods. They literally drove around all day, but then it started getting dark. Lights started coming on. And uh, the young man tapped the arm of the police officer and said, oh, 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 do you know where the church is that's got the big lighted cross. Oh, there's a church that's got a big cross. It sits real high. He says, oh, I, I know where that, police officer says, I know where that church is. He says, oh, if you can find the cross, I live right across the street. If you can find the cross, I can find my way back home. You know, you know what you get at the cross? Forgiveness. You, 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 think, you, think, you think it's a new marriage. It's not a new marriage. It's forgiveness. Forgiveness will take you back home. You think it's a new job. You might need a new job, but guess what? God can work at the job you have if you get to the cross. Your children haven't gone too far if you remember the cross. Father, we thank you for your word. So grateful that we have a Savior in Jesus. And regardless of how miserable our situation is, we can be forgiven. Do your work upon our heart and mind. Jesus' name.